Welcome to A Descent into Science Fiction, Terror and Madness, uh, narrated by Ryan. I'm going to be playing Last Frontier, The Vesuvius Incident. And I thought I would do a casual video, uh, just introducing the game and some of my thoughts on it. Uh, I don't have a camera stand, I do have one on the way. And I intend to do some teaching videos down the road here, maybe the videos two to three minutes in duration and covering individual topics that I think uh, can be difficult to wrap your mind around while you're learning this game. Uh, this game was published back in 1993 and then it went through a uh, aesthetic only and I think a component only upgrade. Uh, it was kickstarted uh, through Print and Play Productions uh, several years ago, maybe five or six years ago now. Um, but as I understand it from that Kickstarter campaign and the, the designer and then uh, Andrew Tolson with Print and Play, uh, what they've said that the game, the rules are the exact same between versions, the 93 version and uh, what was Kickstarted. So just uh, art difference. And there were several versions available uh, from that Kickstarter. I think I got the mid-grade one with wood blocks and I opted for the new art. So you could also, there's versions out there with the Newer versions, but with the old art, etc. Uh, one thing to note here is my Space Marines have different names. So I had a very nice lady who offered to make me some custom names. So I picked some friends, and uh, uh, she did some custom art and put their names for me. And I then made some player boards, modeled after the original ones, and uh, put those names on there. So that's the only difference here. So, Last Frontier, the Vesuvius Incident, uh, these Marines are on their way back from a deployment, and they come across a radio distress signal from this the ship is called the USS Feynman, and the Marines are from the, the Vesuvius, which is, a, that's their ship, so that's where that name comes from, but anyway, they, uh, the Marine ship dispatches these 12 Marines to investigate, and the whole intent of the game is for them to explore the ship, account for what happened, uh, determine what happened, account for the crew. So victory is determined based off of uh, victory points, and you get the bulk of those by accounting for dead crew, but hopefully coming across live crew, protecting them, and getting them back to the shuttle, coming back out with live marines as well, uh, awards points, but interestingly enough... The Marines are not worth as much as the crew on the ship. A very uh, fun game to play, t very uh, cinematic in nature. It, it just feels like you're watching a movie or just reading a book. You can't uh, stop turning pages four as you as you roll dice and make decisions and move your, your troops about. The, uh, the troops, speaking of them, they all have some unique abilities, uh, different roles, I should say. Uh, two of them are pilots, one is a medic, one is a uh, computer hacker, and those are some of the most critical uh, roles there, and I've I've actually took some advice from a guy I've, that's played this a lot online, and uh, he recommended breaking his, his team of 12 into uh, three teams of four each. So what I'm going to do is I've got my critical guys here in the top row, that's team one, so two pilots, the medic, and the hacker, and they're generally going to be relegated to the safer duty. And then the bottom two rows here, those, unfortunately, those are the more expendable Marines. And they're going to be the ones doing entry and uh, looking for, for crew, but also kind of taking the brunt of the alien attacks initially. So those are ideally where most of the casualties will come from. I did play a game um, a while back where I stupidly committed my pilots to making entry and of course I lost both of them and so um, that comes into play near the end of the game. Um, the ship, so where, where I guess some of the time pressure comes in is the Marines are uh, investigating the ship right and they're under attack and all sorts of bad things happen but the ship is in orbit or it's a research ship in orbit around a planet and the its orbit is uh, deteriorating. And it's slowly um, entering the re-entering the atmosphere, and at some point it's going to burn up. So you have a number of turns here, which you'll be able to move about the ship. And then there's a period of uncertainty where you're gonna when you as you get into these turns, 
you're going to flip those markers over and it'll you're either in orbit or you'll start re-entry. One of those five uh, starts re-entry. And then once you start re-entry, you use this timer here. And once you get to maybe it's number two or certainly number three, um, those spaces, there's a chance to return the ship blows up. Um, or incinerates on its re-entry. So the whole goal is to get your Marines through as much of the ship as possible, uh, rescuing for an accounting crew, and make it back to the shuttle area here and escaping. So this board on the right is the main hull. It's one kind of one long corridor, command pod up front, a couple of shuttle access points, and then back here you have engineering and engines, astrophysics lab, so this ship is it's it's kind of a long central hull, and then it's there's a ring around it. So if we'll go back to the cover art here, that that uh, kind of center long cylindrical portion is uh, where you the Marines dock with. You'll see there's four spindles in the arc connecting to a ring. That's what this is here. So these are two of the spindles depicted on the cover art, and those are the lift cars, and they are the only means of getting from the main hull over to the ring here. The ring is uh, where the scientists and sh uh, crew live and where they work. So there's all sorts on the right side is mostly uh, kind of the, the bunk quarters. And then the left side is a bunch of different labs. The main hull is a zero gravity environment. So that may come, will come into play when you're in combat. It affects movement rate. The ring starts the game um, spinning and so there's a gra so there's gravity so when the, as the marines transition from the hull take the lift cars up to the ring they're actually in a gravity environment again and so that affects motion um, how, how players move about and the, how the aliens move about movement rates and all that so there are events there's a lot of events in this game and uh, you're not going to come across all of them in every game but you could see crazy things happen like the hull stops um, and throws the ring into zero g so anyway, let's get back here to the ship before we close out. Um, there's three shuttles. There's the one the Marines arrived on, and that one does not need a pilot. So if, if the two pilots are dead, it can hold 12 humans and uh, crew and Marines. So you can fit up to 12 people in there, don't need a pilot. You've got the command pod and the transport shuttle. Both of those do need a pilot to escape the ship and escape the atmosphere. There's a chance if things go well, you're going to have more than... Uh, you might have more than 12 people coming back out if you find some crew and had take light, ca light casualties. So in that case, you'll want definitely want to keep a pilot alive, at least one, so that you can um, escape. Because like I said, the Marine shuttle only uh, holds has room for, for 12. One thing on the rule book here, learning this game, it was, uh, I would say it was dif honestly, it was difficult. Uh, one of the harder games I had to learn. Uh, the rules are the same between the versions. And the rule book is very high quality, like all the components in this game. Very nice. Um, I think the game probably would have benefited from an, a rules rewrite, though. Um, re read through it a couple times, started to play, um, started taking notes, and that's what this thing here is. I found that uh, by taking notes and kind of going through my turn, it, it really helped accelerate uh, the learning process. So I think by the third game I started... I was doing really well, um, and I think even right now I could play without referencing uh, the rule book heavily, and that's after quite a bit of time off. So uh, the game is it's it is kind of intimidating, but to learn. But once you get it learned and comfortable with it, it actually plays very quickly, especially if you're not taking notes like I do. But um, it does it does play quickly, and it's got a very cinematic feel to it. So. Anyway, I think I'm going to conclude this here. Uh, I will start playing the game, probably shoot another video, and uh, just kind of summarize what happened. Maybe play, play through it, but without rolling dice. Um, take, you know, cut down some of the time and just make, give it more of a narr you know, uh, narrative or cinematic uh, approach to telling the game's story. So, and that'll all be ca casual like this. I got no... Uh, no TV stand right now or, or camera stand. So, But uh, once I do, I tend to shoot in some short videos, like I said, to uh, help teach some of those critical elements of the game. All right, uh, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, plan on being back here soon with another video.